if you are in Christ, and you are in Christ, or you wouldn't be listening to this, you have to settle it, that you are in Christ. Every time we go to communion, every time we take the Eucharist, we're saying, I believe what Jesus did for me. I believe that he died for me. I believe that he rose from the dead, was buried in the ground for me, and rose from the dead for me, that I died with Christ, and I now live with Christ. I, now, I am now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, these are the benefits of being in Christ Jesus. You are redeemed. You've been redeemed, the Bible says, from the curse of the law. That means everything that was brought to you by the curse because of your disobedience, Jesus took. The Bible says Jesus became cursed that we might become blessed. So all of the curses of the law fell on Jesus. Now, this is so important because you have to know what the curses of the law are so that you can know that you've been redeemed from them, that you've been delivered, that you've been set free. Redeemed means to be purchased back. You've been bought out of slavery to that law. Listen to what Galatians 3.13 says. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Some versions use the word ransomed. Some use redeemed. Either way, we've been ransomed. We've been, the, the ransom has been paid. In other words, we've been set free. We've been ransomed from the curse. So we no longer have to receive the curse. But when we don't know that, we just receive it. We just think it's just something that we've got to deal with. But no, we've been set free from the curse. He became cursed that we might be redeemed. So this is Deuteronomy 28. In Deuteronomy 28, God lists through Moses. Moses is speaking here, and he's listing all that comes to us through the curse or blessings, through disobedience or obedience. But this is all from the law. These are all the curses, and he lists every curse, lists all the curses that come upon us from disobedience to the law. If you do not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and are not careful to observe all his commandments, which I enjoin on you today, all, all of these curses shall come upon you and overwhelm you. You will be cursed in the city, cursed in the country, cursed be your grain bin and your kneading bowl. Cursed be the fruit of your womb, the produce of your soil and the offspring of your livestock, the issue of your herds and the young of your flocks. May you be cursed in your coming in, cursed in your going out. The Lord will put a curse on you, defeat you, and frustrate you in everything you undertake until you're speedily destroyed and perish for the evil you have done in forsaking me. The Lord will bring pestilence upon you and will persist until he has exterminated you from the land you are entering to occupy. It goes on to talk about the Lord will strike you with a wasting and fever and scorching and fiery drought and blight and searing wind and a plague and pestilence until you perish. It goes on to mention every plague, every sickness, every poverty, all destruction, all slavery, all this is listed because so we would know that these are curses and these are the curses that Jesus took. When he took the cross for you, he became cursed that all these curses would fall on him instead of you. So when a curse comes upon you, you need to stand firm and say, no, I've been redeemed from the curse. I've been redeemed from cancer. Even cancer is mis mentioned in here. Malignant diseases from every malignant disease, you've been redeemed. You need to know it and hold on to it and stand your ground. So I want you to listen to Kenneth Hagin. When I found out where sickness came from, see, I didn't know. Though I'd been preaching healing, you know, in a measure for eight years or 11 years and saw people healed, many outstanding miracles and so on. I really didn't know where sickness came from until I read that chapter from Sister Yeoman's book. But thank God I found out. When I found out, see, you know the truth, truth will set you free. 
the fear was gone. Hallelujah. 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 Now say it out loud. Christ Christ has redeemed us. us. Christ Christ has redeemed me me from the curse of the law. law. According to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, Sickness, sickness, disease, disease all, sickness, all sickness, all disease, all disease is, a is a curse of the law. Poverty, Poverty is, a is a curse of the law. But according to Deuteronomy, according to Deuteronomy hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ has redeemed me now Christ from that curse. Amen. Amen. Dr. Yeomans, in some of her writings, pointed out that she and her sister had what they called a faith home. You see, her, their daddy, just the two girls, was also a medical doctor. She said, we inherited from him uh, uh, an inheritance, and we maintained a home, big home, like a mansion, two stories. We called it a faith home. We'd bring people in and get them healed, bedfast people, bedfast people. She said, practically every single one was given up to die by medical science. In other words, medical science said we've done all we can do. Said we very seldom failed to get one of them healed. Said, how'd you do that? Well, she said, for instance, now we only had four. I got my bedroom. My sister's got her bedroom. We only have four extra bedrooms. So we can only take four. Being a doctor, she called them patients. We only could take four patients at the time. So we got another one healed. We got a waiting list, you see. So we notified the next person. They brought them in an ambulance. As they brought them into the house, she said, I checked the person's pulse. And having practiced medicine for so many years, I knew the woman was in a dying condition. Had I still been practicing medicine, I would immediately begin to give her strong stimulants to stimulate her heart. But I had them to carry her to the upstairs, upstairs, one of the upstairs bedrooms. And then I just sat down by the bedside. And opened, I didn't have tapes in her day. And so I, opened, I just sat down by her bedside and said, Now, honey, to the lady, close your eyes. Just relax and rest and listen. Listen. And she said, I spent an hour just reading scriptures on healing from one end of the Bible to another. They brought her in in the morning time. She said, then in the afternoon, I went back to her room again and spent an hour reading healing scriptures to her all through the Bible. And I concluded by reading this 28th chapter Deuteronomy and the third, the whole third chapter Galatians. And I said to her, now, Because this woman had TB, tuberculosis, consumption, the Bible calls it. And so she said, I said to her, now, you go to sleep saying it, and every waking moment you say, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, consumption or TB is a curse of the law. But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I no longer have the TB. The lady said, well, I don't understand. Said, that's all right. You, now say it for me. Got her to say it. Say it every time. See to it you do think of it every waking moment. The second morning, she said, I went into her room after we had breakfast, got breakfast for him, And I sat down and read the scripture to her for an hour on the subject of healing. I'd take a couple of them. My sister would take the other two. And said, uh, I said to her, you saying what I told you? Well, yeah, but I don't understand it. Well, what are you saying? Well, you know, according to, according to Deuteronomy 28 chapter, TB is a curse of the law, consumption. But according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has delivered me from the curse of the law, therefore I no longer have TB. Well, you can see her heart's not in it. She's just saying it out of her head. She said, now, keep saying it. Keep saying it. In the afternoon, she said, I went in again, sat down, read to her other scriptures, took the Bible for about an hour, concluded with Deuteronomy 28, Galatians 3. Said, are you saying it? Well, I'm saying it, but don't mean anything to me. Well, say it for me. Got her to repeat it. Now, you go to sleep saying that. 
every waking moment, you say, according to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Now, see, whatever's wrong with you, you could, because that 61st verse said, also every sickness and every disease. So that covers yours. You could say it's a curse of the law, but Christ redeemed me from it, therefore I no longer have it. Third morning, the same thing. Well, I'm saying it, but I don't understand it. Well, just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Now, what did she know? She knew this, that once that word got down on the inside of her, in her spirit, in her heart, and from the inner man, she began to say it, it'd bring forth results. So she said, I got through about 11 o'clock in the morning. I decided to go down to the kitchen and help my sister get, you know, the noon meal ready to serve the patient. And we were there in the kitchen. Suddenly, we heard running footsteps from upstairs. And we heard a lady calling out. We rushed out in the hallway, and this lady rushed down the steps, said, did you know, did you know, Christ redeemed me from the curse of TB. I no longer have the TB. I no longer have the TB. I gave that illustration one time, quoted Dr. Yeomans, and a dear lady said to me, Brother Hagin, my daughter, one of my daughters, back in the, th it was, this was back in the 30s, uh, my daughter, one of my daughters, or in the 40s, one of my daughters ha has bedfast with TB. I I'm going, going this afternoon. I I'm going to her, live in another city. In fact, she went by bus. She told me that I went and read those scriptures to her. She'd been bedfast, given up to die, got up, bless God, and walked out of bed healed. <laughs> Blessed be God, both down for God's word works. Yes. Say it out loud. God's word works. Say this, God's word works for me. God's word works for me. Point to your neighbor and say, God's word, God's word will work for you. Work for you. Amen. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. 